I'm not sure we could have done this notion of an interlinked Marvel Cinematic Universe without Captain America. Whether it's bit by a spider or exposed to gamma rays, the notion of a super-powered human started with Steve Rogers. He is the backbone of the universe. As we were developing Captain America, the first Avenger, we brought in these two writers named Chris Marcus and Steve McFeely. They were the sole writers on the first Captain America film. They went on to become the sole writers on Captain America's Winter Soldier, sole writers on Civil War, and now Infinity War and Avengers Endgame. They deserve as much credit for Captain America as anybody else. When we were talking to them, they had two movies out. And so the idea that, no, this is going to build into a giant, ongoing, interconnected universe was like, uh-huh, sure, of course it will. I have no doubt. Chris and I sort of coincidentally had been sort of blue skying about, you know what someone should do? A period superhero movie, mm -hmm. right? When they were invented, when they were created, what would it be like to use them in the proper time? And then when we heard that Marvel was going to do that, we, oh, oh my, we need to go chase that down. As for the writing, we never worried about the larger universe. The mission is always make the best movie in front of you because this whole thing is dependent on making good movies one at a time. We had the same goal in the first Captain America. We subtitled the Captain America film, The First Avenger, for a reason, because putting a star in red, white, and blue on that scrawny kid who yearns to be a part of the battle, that is where it all started. We knew that the movie wouldn't work if you didn't buy Steve Rogers at the top. I don't like bullies. I don't care where they're from. Well, there are already so many big men fighting this war. Maybe what we need now is a little guy. The spectacle and the action sequences only work if you're engaged in the characters. You know, all the visual effects, and it doesn't matter how big your budget is, if you're not engaged in Steve Rogers' Captain America, I think you're wasting your time, really. We needed to fall in love with skinny Steve Rogers mm -hmm. before he ever became Captain America. And never forget that he's in there. Yeah. The serum amplifies everything that is inside, so good becomes great, bad becomes worse. This is why you were chosen. Because a strong man who has known power all his life may lose respect for that power, but a weak man knows the value of strengths. Steve Rogers, more than any of the other superheroes, really kind of loses who he was in the process of becoming Captain America. The old him ceases to exist. There's no life of Steve Rogers that he goes back to. In the Avengers, he's the leader because he's completely dedicated to everything, partially because he doesn't have anything else to turn to. His desire to keep it ordered and to keep some meaning, uh, all of that stuff is still an issue for him. He's always been this very austere kind of guy, but, but had this real loyalty to institutions and to people. We have orders. We should follow them. Following is not really much down. I think they slowly strip that away from him. You know, he loses his faith in government and Winter Soldier, loses his faith in his friends and his family and Civil War. You know, I think when we see him in Infinity War, he's just turned his back on a lot of things. Earth just lost her best defender. So we're here to fight. And if you want to stand in our way, we'll fight you too. With this movie, they let him kind of return back to that uh, hopeful uh, soldier, leader. This is the fight of our lives and we're gonna win, whatever it takes. When we first met the folks at Marvel, we chased the Captain America job and certainly had no idea that it would lead to the next 10 years of our career. And we've had Cap most of the way. It's been a lot of fun having someone with that gravity. It's a rare character. You don't get to write that character much anymore. He's an aspirational figure. It's a combination of where we put him in the universe and Cap rising to the challenge. You just don't know when to give up, do you? I can do this all day. When our characters are beginning to come to life, it all starts with artwork. Our visual development group, led by Ryan Minerding, for the better part of a decade, has been that very important step between the comics and the final product that has brought Captain America to life. One of the great things about the comics is that Captain America was always designed to, to read really quickly. And also, because they had limited colors in the printing, there's a simplification that happened with a lot of them that they were just, you know, this guy's red, white, and blue. There's a really fast, iconic thing that happens with, with the characters as the source material. 
trying to bring that into a real setting, like for a film, whatever they simplified for the design for the comics, we're trying to fill out in a way that makes it feel real. If they only had line work and four colors, and they're able to make something that resonates with people for 60, 70 years, how can we find a way of putting it into our work? In the case with Captain America, we're trying to find reference materials that um, bring him into sort of a world of a soldier. The first time he puts on the costume in Captain America First Avenger, it's, it's about him being that sort of patriotic icon that's on the, in the USO show. So that was where we were trying to sort of take those really classic and iconic lines that were designed back in the 40s and turn it into something that was always kind of meant to be a little bit goofy. Sort of put him on stage and say, you're a symbol for America, show us how much of a symbol you are. Not all of us can storm a beach or drive a tank, but there's still a way all of us can fight. One of the amazing things about being able to work on a character through multiple movies is that you actually get to tell the story of the character through the costume. Seeing Cap's change from Captain America the First Avenger through Avengers and into Winter Soldier, for example, is a, is a pretty big visual change, being a, a person in the 1940s and coming forward into 2012 and sort of living in that, that period of time and being a fish out of water and then sort of acclimating very quickly and becoming this, this very stealth-oriented, extreme tactical ops person is a, is a crazy change. And it works so well because, partially because the costume actually reflects what he's going through. What made Cap unique in the Marvel Universe and sort of in the nature of his powers, he's sort of basically a man only more so. His fighting technique is a very visceral, surprising experience of action. <laughs> From a visual standpoint, you take the script and you identify like 10 great moments in the movie, and then you take a brilliant artist like Ryan, and you say, here's what we're looking for from this moment. Uh, and then Ryan draws up and, and colors and inks a beautiful, you know, frame from the movie. Before we get started, does anyone want to get out? They do incorporate lighting. They incorporate strong visual element. Where will the camera be? Uh, in a very, you know, sort of dynamic and specific moment. And that does inspire the movie. For Captain America, almost every iconic sequence came right out of Ryan's original drawings, where he was just by himself with his drawing pad at his computer. I've been at Marvel for about 12 years, which is almost the entire time that Marvel Studios has existed. There's a sort of a craziness to the notion that I've been able to stay with the character over the course of nine years. Being that sort of medium between the comics and what is actually on screen has been a joy that I couldn't have imagined. When we really distilled the core qualities that we wanted out of Captain America, I think there's a moral fiber to him that really isn't something that you act, that it's something you need to possess. And Chris Evans was someone who seemed to inhabit all of those qualities the most. So everyone was in love with the idea of Chris, except Chris. The only reason there was hesitation to begin with was because of the, the commitment. It's a big movie, and you know, it was the thing that I wish I could be as a man, you know? And the creative forces behind the film are fantastic, between Joe and Kevin Feige. And, you know, Marvel in general, they, they, they know what they're doing. So in the end, I was so excited. Once he committed, he committed a thousand percent you know he stands there tells the truth and then kicks ass i think there's a confidence that he really brings to the character and an integrity that people really respond to there's something so endearing so charismatic so charming he has so much heart there was something very heroic there is something that he brings to the character beyond what we could write on the page beyond what we could illustrate in you know, special effects that is uniquely Chris. It's no secret, I love Chris Evans. And I love Captain America. Captain America was the single hardest character to launch in this universe. This kind of guy out of time, and is it too retro? Are people gonna get it? I cannot imagine anybody but Chris playing this role. It's really, it's a very difficult role to play because on one hand, you, know, you have this character that has this very strong moral compass. You know, you try to think, where's the conflict in that? He allows himself to be vulnerable. He allows himself to not take it so seriously. Don't worry about it. It's just a... It's okay. It makes you love that character and it makes people want to follow him. It's been really great watching him sort of pull this off. 
what he does in these movies may look effortless, but it's effortless because, you know, it's a testament to what he's done with the character. It's tough to try and present challenges to someone who is so selfless. The biggest worry is not only trying to make the guy entertaining, but also keep him interesting enough to have audiences want him coming back. <laughs>